everybody! Hey. How's your day been going? Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you describe how the reaction has been to Echo, like, ever since, now that we know, we've had months and months of speculation. Uh, grounders in space. Yes. Um, what do you think, what's the biggest, have people been telling you they're like, what they think is gonna happen? That's actually one of the, that's one of the main things that I've heard is they think that was gonna happen. Um, another thing that they are worried about is, or not worried about, that they wonder about is what's gonna happen when she gets back to Earth right. with Octavia. Um, because that's gonna be a fun reunion. <laughs> right, you killed her, sort of. No, I didn't. Yeah, we went over this. We went over this, right guys? <laughs> you didn't mean it to. Was, <laughs> I slipped. You slipped, yeah. <laughs> Um, we have some fan questions that will open up to the audience, um, so on the internet. Yes. So, um, at Wordy Blurred would like to know, Wordy Blurred, um, was, what was something that surprised you about playing Echo? The work, a plot line, a specific theme, or an emotional connection? Like, what has surprised you about playing her? Well, one thing that surprised me, there's a couple things, like in, in season four, because you only get these incremental pieces of a personality, like the, like the writers write stuff, and then you go home and you marinate on it and you like think about it and, and you weave it into your work. So it's like, I had an idea of Echo and then they give me a new script and I'm like, oh, all right. Well, now we're gonna have to combine those things. So I was, I was surprised that it took her so long to um, buy into peace. You know what I mean? Like it was like every episode I was like, she's still like, She's still super, super, super as good. And, and the reason being is that in the cages, she seemed surprised that Bellamy actually was honorable and came back for her and, and that they did that thing together, you know? And so I thought that she would have been a little bit more pliable, but um, that was one thing that surprised me about her. Yeah. Well, it's like under Naya's leadership. Exactly. I mean, like, you don't mess around when Naya's in charge. <laughs> You're just like, okay. What's interesting is Rowan had much more of a, it seemed an open mind toward a potential piece. Yeah. yeah. But well, because he got banished, and then, like, you know, mother like son, <laughs> you banished Echo. Poor, poor little lass. Oh. Oh. Um, what, I feel like uh, it's the first time that you really have more or any scenes with Louisa, uh, because you know, I think more and Echo didn't have any scenes yet, right, until the end. No, yeah, no, we didn't have any scenes. It's nice to have a fellow grounder up there. But in a weird way, I feel like Amori and Echo, like, even though they are very different, because Amori is, you know, a solo warrior, like, Echo in some ways is the same, but they're both really strong, like, they both operate as individuals very, very well, even though, like, Echo is protectiveness as Gaeta Nation. Um, I think they understand what it means to be alone. Which is really helpful when you're up for six years with six people, right? Right. <laughs> um, before we get to the next question, I have to ask the rest of the people, if, if you had a choice between going up in space with six specific people or going underground with 1,200 people, what would you choose? Dang. I know it depends on- Did we not, did we took the, the being on planet Earth element out of it? Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know, what would you guys do? Space or space? Space. Hunger? Right. Right. It's like that could go both ways. Like you could be like, these are my best friends. We're gonna have a nice time. And by the end of it, you're like, I hate you. Right. <laughs> I never want to see you again. And you also you got to spend a lot more time doing scenes with people like you know Richard and no, obviously Bob and uh, Louisa, but. So tell us about working with Lindsay Morgan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> working with Lindsay is literally the stupidest thing ever because her and I are just like so dumb together. On stage. <laughs> They're roommates right now. Yeah, we live together right now. It's like just talking to her before I walk on stage, and uh, like, like, well, like, <laughs> you know, everything is very dramatic, right? I'm like, how close? As close as you want. Hello. <laughs> But so like, you know, we're like la, 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 do, 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 do. <laughs> And then we'll just have to like get super focused and they're like cut we're like ah. <laughs> um, like a sister. Yeah, like a, she's totally like a sister, exactly. And we like we created this personality called Chad. 
which some of you may have heard of. Chad. Chad. Is that a combined? That was Echo. Echo. <laughs> so in the end of season four, like Echo was just like, I'm here with all these people I don't know. And there's a spaceship, but she didn't know it was a spaceship. She was like, there's something. And this is Becca's lap. Like she was just like, what? <laughs> so like I was walking around every scene just like, <laughs> and they were all like, we need to get the processor to the something something and do the buttons and press the things and Echo's like, <laughs> and so like that was Chad, Chad's like, the, I don't know man, <laughs> cool, <laughs> and so we made like this character Chad, <laughs> like a stoned alter ego, my, it's my, all my stoned alter ego, and so Chad lives on. And there's a new character on the show, uh, Shaw, played uh, by our friend Jordan now. And, and, and he's like, who is Chad? <laughs> Me and Lindsay are always like, Chad. We refer to each other as Chad. Adorable. It's so dumb. <laughs> we laugh a lot. What was it like for you? I mean, your first ever, like your foray into the show was the goss bikini in the cage. You know? Yes. And then progressively, you know, we got the ground outfits, the Ice Nation outfits, and then you are up in space. We're going to see a whole new look. I'm looking forward to J. Crew Echo, more of a modern look. How comfortable were you? I know you can't say anything, but how was it for you being on a spaceship set and wearing completely different clothing? And like, does it help your mindset to play this character? Um, you know, what was funny is like in season four, they gave me heels, which is so ridiculous. I was like, yeah, like I, I really need, like I really need to be taller than ever. <laughs> I'm like, and I need to sword fight in heels because that seems normal. Um, but that was a bad choice. But they gave me flats, and then in this season they gave me cropped pants. So like every time like I sat down, the pants went from like here to here, <laughs> and I was I always just felt so weird. <laughs> like I felt like I couldn't be taken seriously. Like I was like, yeah, and like my like I'm wearing like long shorts. <laughs> That. So, so there was an outfit change, um, but um, it, it, it chilled me out. There was something about that jacket that was just so regal and imperial. Like I was just like when I walked, like I just like like had like I don't know. Yeah, I had swag. It was always that sweat. Now I'm in a yoga outfit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like people joking about what, you know, for six years, what is Echo going to teach everyone how to braid their hair? Is she going to teach them how to be a panda? Like, what's going to happen? Panda makeup 101. She's going to teach them how to be a panda. <laughs> She's like, things to do today. <laughs> um, but like, well, when we were like at the beginning of, of the season, you, you decide on your show look which is you, 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 it's your main look for the season. So you can obviously let go, it changes sometimes depending on what's happening, you know, like when you have to put on panda face makeup or war, your war look, or whatever. But for the most part, you're in one look. And I was like, let's do some crazy braids. And me and Lindsay were like, yeah, bro, Chad. <laughs> Um, because I'm like, they had so much time and space, they were, I'm like, you know that like, the, the grounders were like, you want to see some braids? I will show you some braids. And they just wanted to braid everyone's hair. Well, but it's nice because the opposite is probably going to happen in the bunker where like, you know, there, you have a very limited amount of sky crew and a lot of grounders, so their outfits and hair is going to take a change too. It's going to be an interesting shift. And then when they all teach each other again, they're like, what are you? Happening. Well, did you guys, you guys have seen some of the photos of like, I mean, I think like Richard's hair is amazing, or like Murphy's hair is amazing, I think Monty's hair is amazing. Have you guys seen Octavia's hair? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I cut her hair. You personally cut Marie's hair? I sure did. Oh, wow, how'd that go for the crew? We held it. Okay. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> you should post it at some Marie's like, cut my hair! And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We made a boomerang, so it's me going like this. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Nice, please do. Okay, we have some internet questions, and we'll open it up here. Um, if you could go back in time and have a conversation with yourself before shooting your first episode of The 100, what would you say? And that's from Samara Haram. Practice spitting. Practice <laughs> spitting, okay. 
And um, I was really nervous. My first episode, it was really like a stressful day. Like I was really nervous. Um, just relax. Just relax. Yeah. Be the cage. <laughs> <laughs> Be one with the cage. I mean, at least we didn't see you hung upside down in Great of Blood, even though that's what they were. That's doing. what they were shooting the moment before we started shooting. So like Bob would like, who <laughs> when I first met Bob, he's like in underwear, basically. <laughs> and he was like, damn, that was crazy. And I was like. Hey, <laughs> nice to meet you. It was Canadian winter, like it was like we were like we shoot in a warehouse, basically. So like we're standing there in like gauze, and uh, it, was, it was so cold. So I was like, <laughs> had you watched the show before you were cast on the show? Yes. Okay, so you were a fan, which helps. Okay. And did they give you any backstory for Echo? Or did you create it as you went along? I did create it as I went along. Yeah. I actually thought I was related to Rowan. Maybe you are. But I might be, but I also think if I was, it would have been, we would have known. I would have been like, brother. <laughs> like you have the Desmond accent from Lost? <laughs> <laughs> See you in another life, brother. That kind of thing. All right. Um, one more question before we open up to the fans here is, um, MJ Lupin 22 would like to know, how long did it take to train for your fight season, season four? So both Octavia and like all of it. Zach and I, um, I was so nervous to do this sword fighting, so I was like, I'm gonna get on top of this one and I'm gonna be a good actor and I am gonna prepare in every way I know how. So I was like Googling sword fighting and I was like, I was like, I'm gonna, I went to Toys R Us and I got like Nerf swords and I was like, hey, yo Zach, I know like you're like a big star, but like, you wanna go to the park and like sword fight? <laughs> Zach McGowan went nerf sword fighting in a park. We did. Oh, just like <laughs> summertime, and he was like, all like, he like it was like hot out, so he's all like, you know, like muscly and stuff like that. And I'm like, this probably looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> Two adults with <laughs> nerf swords. Exactly. And he's left-handed, so he was trying to like. He's like, no, you gotta do it more like this. And I was like, I don't know what you're doing. It's the opposite side, but we practice like a lot off screen, and same with them. Marie, but we have an amazing stunt team, like amazing. The fact that they they do what they do, like it's amazing. Um, but it takes us, like Zach was saying, like on one of the shows, they, oh, hi. on one of those shows, they take like um, a few weeks to learn a sword fight. On ours, they'll give us like a week, maybe a few days. Sometimes, like there was a scene I did a sword, uh, not a sword scene, but a, a fight scene I did this season that I showed up in the morning and we shot it that day. So I literally had like an hour and it was a huge scene. I was like, <laughs> you pull it off. Yeah. Yes. Did you have any inkling of, or did they tell you after the Mount Weather scene, you know, they take out of Mount Weather? Yeah. We assumed we wouldn't see any of those crowds again, love, love, echo. Did you know that you were to be back? Yes. Oh. No, I didn't. I didn't at all. <laughs> they asked me this question on Friday, um, and I didn't. I thought, like, because when you come in on the end of the season, like, you're like, are they beginning to develop the storyline, or are you just going to be a day player? And they brought me in on season three at the beginning, so I was like, maybe there's going to be something here. Then I didn't, I disappeared for 10 or, you know, 13 episodes, so I didn't know I was coming back. But. Well, congratulations on being a regular season yeah. three. One of like the best sets and best cast and best everything. That set is spectacular. Oh yeah, yeah, you were there. Yeah. How was that? I mean, I, I wanted to go with her. She's like, I'm coming to Vancouver. I'm going to set, and I was so tired. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to come with you. I know. You so so tired. Yeah. I was there for the day one of the season finale filming, and I had zero context of what I. Had. <laughs> you must have been like, what? I was John Snow. I knew nothing, and I was like, what? Yeah. No, but the sets are um, next level. Yeah. yeah, the spaceship. Did you the, see this? I was gonna say, did you see the spaceship? Yeah. So I'm a Battlestar Galactica fan, and it's on par with Battlestar Galactica. Like it's that good. Yeah. So you guys have a lot to look forward. And then there's a particular um, Clark and Maddie set that I'm very fond of. <gasps> yeah. You know. I'm obsessed with that set. I, I have, like my entire phone is photos of that set. I'm just like, I'm gonna take another photo. Yeah. You'll see it very soon. Sorry to be that those people. Yeah, yeah they yeah. did an amazing job. They did. Yeah, the detail. Yeah. Like, like we've been braiding hair in space, and 
for these guys. Exactly. Well, you're welcome to line up and ask Tom's <laughs> questions uh, about anything you like, uh, 100 related or not. We can talk about food, boy, you know. Food. Food, rest, you have your family restaurant here? Ah, yes, yes, the restaurant, pizza. Pizza, delicious. Delicious, delicious pizza. Hi. I forgot what I was gonna ask, oh no. Okay, yeah, oh. okay, I remember, I remember. Here we I go. saw in the trailer, Echo has more of a softer look. Does she like, does she have time to figure out herself out in space and like what she, like, does she have like kind of like a, what she wants to do like when she gets on the ground or like how she is? Well, like when we were doing like our the look for the season, we what we do is like we do different hairstyles. Yeah. So like I sit in the chair for hours, and they're like, "What about this?" And they put in you know extensions and braids, and we did different looks. And I was like, "I want I wanted her to have like a softer look." So I was like, "I thought it would be cool if she looked kind of like a, um, uh, like a samurai. Like she just had like long hair that she like did yeah. it like or like a like braid like one braid or something like that, but." But that got turned down. <laughs> um, but um, there, there was the intention to soften her because one thing she did learn, I think, what she did learn is that I think she, they should learn friendship. You know what I mean? I think before, I think she, it occurred to her in space that she had been used yeah. in a way, you know, by um, Queen Naya. And so instead of fighting for duty. She was fighting for, she's, you know, spent season five fighting for friendships and fighting, you know, for, for family um, in a different sense. So she is, yeah, softer. Did she keep a bit of her rounder look or is she like completely like Arcadian now? Well, that's, well, that was the negotiation is I was like, how do I keep Echo without like softening her too much? Yeah. Because like part of like the thing I love so much about her, she's just like, yeah, she's like, this is like, she's just like unapologetically who she is. That's why I'm like, <laughs> which is like why, like, I'm like, I, I want more echo in my life. <laughs> I was so upset she wasn't, she was in season four, but not like as much as I really wanted her to be. Yeah. Yeah, she's one of my favorite characters. Oh, thank you. I'm about to be you. fed then. This is the yeah, I can't season. wait, I'm so excited. I'm so happy you're a series regular. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Okay, so my question is, we know Echo wasn't brought into the show until season two. And I think as many of us have experienced it, it's one of the most welcoming, most sweet, kind, caring cast. So when you went onto that set for the first day of the table read, it wasn't like you immediately fit in, and were they like welcoming and sweet to you, like the whole cast? Well, like, the only person I worked with was Bob. Um, um, for the first few days, and then there was one scene that I did where so we didn't do like table reads. We don't have time. Like on the hundred, things move really, really fast. I remember I was on a different show called uh, Travelers, and they had a table read, and they're like, "We're having a table read at lunch," and I was like, "Table read." I'm like, "Table read is when like everyone sits down, like all the actors and like the people they bring in for the for the day of that episode, and they they all read it to like hear it, hear the seat, like hear the the, the episode." I'm like we don't have time for that. Like it, like we move. There's so much to be done. Um, so I worked with Bob, and he was lovely. And then there was an episode where I walked out of Mount Weather, and in that episode I met Eliza, Ricky, Alicia. Like I met like everybody, and I was like, "Hey guys, <laughs> how are you?" And it was hilarious. Like we're in this tiny little tent, and the rain was like beating down. We're on the Canadian mountains, and we're all just sitting there, like around like the heaters, and they're all. They're all like in, in, in clothes and I'm in a, a bikini, basically. <laughs> and I was like, hey, nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> but um, everyone was like super welcoming and it's, it's the one thing about the show that really stays with me is how welcoming everybody is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Love you. you. <laughs> I, the Travelers threw me. I like the Travelers. I've got to think back to what scene or where what you read the yeah. I was in season one or two. Two. It's on Netflix, everybody. Travelers. Travelers is a great show. It's really an interesting show. Yeah, yeah. I think we It was my question. So <laughs> such a strong personality with Echo and just getting to the to the you know, to the end and then seeing her in the room ready to, you know, kill herself. I it, describe the, the whole transition if you if you've got time or Pull it into a nutshell how you brought that the beginning of the season to the end yeah well like she was the person that was like taught honor so honor was a big so like one of the things i worked on was um 
being a samurai. And actually that was what they were alluding to in like the suicide process is like when you're a spy or when you're a samurai you get caught or you know you just take your own life and I researched it it's called like seppuku and it's really gnarly and I was like oh my god this is awful um but I thought it was like I love how they like pull pieces of you know history and, and um whatever into like into their world so that, I think she, I think there's a moment, I'm not sure if you guys have ever had this, where like your whole, when you, what, what you feel you know is completely turned upside down. And it's so disorienting that, you know, she's in the enemy's area and she's about to go to space which she thinks is blasphemy. She never believed in this. Like she was not a part of that, that, that ideology at all. And so she was just probably like way over her head. She's like, this is over. Rowan's dead, I'm banished. Naya's dead, I don't know what's going on. What's the chip? Where am I? What is going on right now? And she's like, it's over. <laughs> and that, that's not the funny part, but the funny part is how Raven walked in and <laughs> was like, Whatever is happening right now, uh, we gotta go. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, okay. And then, and then like, I look at the, there's a quality to echo that I always try to maintain, which is, you know, you wanna find like the opposite of a character. So like when Echo is so deadly and so fierce, I was like, there has to be something she's lost and there has to be a childhood that she's lost and there has to be a lot of pain that she's covering with that. So to me, she has she has she, she doesn't have great people skills <laughs> because because she's you know there's a child quality and an innocence to her underneath all of that aggression, um, and that was to me that scene where she would just pitch like and she was like, oh, what's going on? You no, know, but yeah. I also love the look of surprise on the faces that. When you first saw Zero G, when you and Amore. <laughs> and Amore was like, yeah! And then I was like, oh. <laughs> Hi. So I know you always talk about Echo being an orphan, and I know it breaks all of our hearts. Please tell me the season she finds family with both space crew and on the ground, and that she has a place to belong, because watching you be in pain hurts all of us. And we just want Echo happy. Even if it's like a minute of like a smile with Maddie or something, can we at least have like a little hint of hope for you? Because we want you happy. That is like the sweetest thing that you, like, like I feel so endeared right now, because the one thing in working with Echo that I really learned was you know, you watch the news and you watch, and you can, it's so easy to vilify people. And, you know, and I feel like, so what I had to do in my, in my prep was I had to study, like, what makes someone so angry that you can behave that way. And then I literally just, like, was, my heart was breaking for all of these people, like child soldiers in Africa or, like, you know, the Middle East and all that kind of stuff. I was like, these aren't bad people. They're cultured to be, like they're trained into being this way and they deserve love. And I feel like, like I feel like I'm gonna cry. Like, like everyone deserves love. Um, so my, I became really endeared to Echo because when I first read her, I was like, I'm like, I'm a very like yoga, like hippie type of person. So like, I was like, what the hell is going on here? Like, why is she so angry? And then when I got behind it, I was like so heartbroken. So I, I'm touched that you say that because I feel like if we could all treat each other the way you just said, you know, like it would be so amazing. And um, Echo does find a family. It does get tested uh, when everyone gets back to Earth. As you know, the hundred says, <laughs> um, and I think that's what she's fighting for. Is her new? She's like, I, 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 I thought I found a family, you know. Like I hope, I hope I found a family, and I think that's what freaks her out. Is like she finally became vulnerable, 
And then she was like, I can't lose this. Like, did they love me like I love them? You know, and so that's, I think, for her a big part of season five. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi again. I just want to say that, first of all, I write essays defending Echo and everything because I feel like she doesn't, like, you know, like, I feel like she does no worse than anybody else. And her kill count, by the way, is not higher than, like, Clark or Bellamy. <laughs> let's let's true. face it. <laughs> yeah, like, I think you actually killed very little people. So, um, but my question is, uh, so you said that Echo doesn't really have a lot of people skills. You're stuck six years in space. Can we get a hint of any kind of small talk that you have with anybody? Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, like, we, like, like, I was saying, like, Richard and I, like, decided that, like, Murphy and Echo became best friends because, like, he's, like, he'd be, like, pacing around the ship being, like, man, you know, the worry, like, she's just, like, today, she's just, like, I don't know, we're just, she's not hearing me, man, she's just, like, not, you know, getting it, you know, and I'm just, like, yeah. <laughs> he's, like, you know, like, hey, what do you think, Echo? Oh, I know, I know, you're right. You're so right. You're, you're always right, Echo. You're just always right, man. But like, Echo doesn't say anything to Murphy, but like, she's like, become his like, therapist. <laughs> and like, and he just like, arrives at his own conclusions just by like, talking at Echo. <laughs> um, but I think like, in a weird way, like, you know like, in a group of friends, there's like, one person that like, just, is like the steady person that like is just like the rock like i think she's just she just doesn't like care to get into like gossip or like that kind of stuff so she's just always like she's very logical so she's very like yeah or we could do it this way which makes way more sense or you know what i mean like she's just very like she doesn't say a lot but when she does it's very poignant um so, in space, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> like small talk with other people. Like, with like small talk? Yeah. I think like too, like another thing that she likes is like, she likes like games. Like I think like she's kind of like a sassy person. Like there's a scene where um, in Polis, like she flips Bellamy like onto his back. Like when he's like, wait, and grabs my arm. But then I was like, ha And I turned <laughs> and like flipped him over. And then like, like I pull out a knife and I'm like, <laughs> so we can expect a lot of Monopoly so going on? Uh, Monopoly? Is that small talk? Sure, there's a lot of small talk. Thank it's you. a lot of hide and seek. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, well, those well, are all going to be comics, by the way. So oh, I will she definitely do I got you. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> Echo Play Monopoly, coming soon. <laughs> This is actually kind of a similar question to that one. Um, but so back like in the early seasons, people like they were watching like old sports stuff. So assuming the arc theoretically has like a repository of pop culture, you've got nothing but set in years, what sort of things from like basically modern times like music or like TV shows would Echo be all about like getting into during seven years of boredom? Or six, I don't know. I think like she's probably like Whoa. <laughs> like, I think she actually, like, no. <laughs> so I didn't, we, we as actors spoke about, like, what kind of music and movies and stuff that they watched. Because for sure, they had, like, a terabyte of classics, which are, like, our movies that we're watching right now. <laughs> Blade Runner, or, like, whatever it is. So they, they did have movies and TV and music. But, like, she was probably just, like, <laughs> Like, you know, if there's popcorn, she would just be like, <laughs> shh, shh, oh God. They're like, Echo, we've seen this movie before. I know. It's like, you know, you can imagine like, you've never seen a movie or you've never been a part of technology. You're just like, <laughs> um, but what is her favorite? I don't know, like I would like to say something weird, like Dirty Dancing or some like weird, like classic from like, my, one of my classics, right. you know, or like Grease or something like that, you know, something like really nerdy. Like, I feel like she just like, like when you go so far in one direction, like she for sure like has like, she's like, I like Finding Nemo. <laughs> Cheesy reality shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Instead of watching the Hunger Games going, yeah, I could have killed him and her right yeah, exactly. away. Exactly. <laughs> that's so true, actually. Yeah. She'd be like strategizing. She'd be like, well, that's not how I would do it. Katniss has nothing on me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. So you were saying how Naya raised you, or Echo. Do you think the six years in space has helped Echo to learn to think on her own? That's a really interesting question because I think that like she's always operated on her own. She's always but she's always thought with Naya's voice in her head. But yeah, but but within the framework of socialization and training. Right. Um, so I think that's actually big. That that's what made me like that's what made Echo season five really difficult was who is she on her own? Right. Um, because there was a lot of like. And like mind explosions. I think she was like, this is friendship? Or like, you're doing this just to be nice? Or like, you know, like moments like that where she was like, it was a big learning curve that she went through. Um, um, and so, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Would the six years in space help Echo to think on her own, like without yeah, his like, voice I think in her head? She, she definitely, she, like, I think in space, she's down created like a space identity, where right. she's like, this is me with my friend in space. And that's what she kind of arrived at. When they get back to Earth, that's what becomes dangerous because for the first time, she's put in circumstances where she has, you know, default and training and, you know, like in the same way that she accidentally stabbed Octavia because she's just so As like, Gators comes back to fighting, that that all gets tested. So she's trying to, she she's worried about she gets tested. So she's like, there's a whole other thing that happens when she gets back to Earth. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Okay. Um. Uh. So, what's your favorite dynamic for Echo this season? Like, who's your favorite character for her to interact with? Murphy and Echo, I think, play really well, like, off of each other. Um, Echo? Yes, all of the things. What? <laughs> Is he more jealous? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hi. I, uh, I saw this anonymous question online that was posed after Bob said that Bellamy was going in tricks, so I wanted to ask you, are the characters up in space and in the bunker speaking in trick because the people on the Elegius ship don't know trick, so it's like code? Please hold. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so it's like people in space and people in the bunker both know trick. Yeah. In season five, are they using trig as code because Allegius doesn't know trig? <laughs> With a prisoner ship, do you the use trig in front of them so they don't know what you're saying? <sighs> yes. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. But like that also, there's a whole other thing with that. But um, I think I can say, like, you know, like you go to a town, you know you speak French, your friend speaks French, you hope <laughs> no one else on the bus speaks French. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me, uh, you said you took French immersion in yes. the, I, uh, I'm taking a French minor right now, so that's really cool. Yes, it's fast. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> no, no, uh, c'est une bonne, bonne convention. Ah, never. <laughs> Merci. Where's that cat? Yeah. You should translate for me, because my French is awful right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. For the next French lesson. The next Hi. Um, you mentioned how uh, it up in Vancouver would be like really cold or really bad weather and you'd have to be outside no matter what and filming in that. So how did you get yourself prepared for those really intense physical days when you knew you'd be miserable but had to do it anyway? <laughs> yoga. <laughs> yeah. Yoga helps. Nope. How <laughs> many? Jameson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> being Canadian. 
uh, they cover you in hot patches. Those things that like, you know, like the hand warmer things under your clothes. Yeah, they, what I've now figured out like where the major veins are in a human body. Because like, that's where you put the hot patches. Um, but there, there's no getting around it. Like we, it gets so miserable and so cold. I can't like describe it. Like I literally just feel like I'm like digitized. I'm just like, uh, and my mouth won't work. I'm, I want to run up and be like, the thing is happening to the thing. But I'm like, because <laughs> my, my lips, I've lost feeling in my face. And I can't operate. And so you can't really get around it. But um, you just, you know what helps? It's just like your friends. Like, like there's so much laughter on set. So like, you just have to like attach yourself to somebody <laughs> and laugh and try to get through it. Yeah. Can you say if you're more comfortable in season five physically? Like not as freezing, for example? I don't know if I can. <laughs> Thank you very much. Fair, fair. Hi. Hi. Um, so at Unity Days in Vancouver, yes. you talked a little bit about approaching like big wide like pieces of wire and then they're like when you got out of the cage there was like a one inch lip like above the cage so like it grabbed me and like pulled me off and it would just like scrape against like the back of like my legs so every time I hopped in and out like I'd get bruising I had like after that week I had bruises all up the back of my legs and I also had like big kind of bruises on my butt I'm just sitting there for like 10 hours, just like, this is, sucks. <laughs> and they gave me like a, they gave me like a one inch piece of foam. They're like, sit on this. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> Welcome to the header, here's your cage. Yeah, here's your cage, and here's your one inch piece of foam. And your gauze bikini. Yeah, yeah. That's a good intro. Yeah. I had a nice time. <laughs> I have one more question because I have to go soon. So I, it's when Echo finally comes back when they get back to the ground. Does she have a problem? Like, does she have an issue with like figuring out who she should stay with, like space crew or with back in Asgeta with her clan? Absolutely. I think that's like that's the biggest issue for her. I think you know, like, because she also doesn't know who knows that she got banished. So she doesn't know if Asgeta oh, yeah. knows that she got banished because Ron banished her and then died, but Octavia was there and heard. And she could have said something. And she could have said something. But doesn't she, doesn't she not know if um, Echo's alive or not? I feel like she doesn't know because she, she doesn't know. Bunker and Echo thinks Echo she died doesn't know. and she doesn't know. But, yeah. but like, regardless, like, Echo also doesn't know, like, did Octavia say anything? Like, who, because like, Asgeta are very, like, loyal to their clan. So yeah. she's like, so you guys are with the friends? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, we need to talk. <laughs> like, so yeah, she's really freaked out about that because she was the royal guard. Yeah. So for her to just be like, yo, I'm with my new friends. Are you with your new friends? And are we friends? <laughs> are we good? <laughs> <laughs> we, we go wrong. Chad, we cool? <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Lovey Taj. It was so nice meeting you this weekend. Yes, absolutely. So um, my question is, the clans all have their own symbols, and my and some of them are very like out of the world symbols. Like I think it's like a, some weird hand with a sword in it. Do you know the backstory behind how these symbols were created and why each of them are like this? I don't. But me and Zach, like we we have like the swirling high five. <laughs> <laughs> Zach and I are ridiculous when we're on set together. We're just made of time. the weirdest legends. We're like, and this is how Asgeta gets the face mask. A lot so. of Irish. A lot of Irish to Tweet uh, Aaron Ginsberg, the writer, Aaron Ginsberg. He, I think he will either tell you or he'll not, but he knows, um, I believe, the origination of the symbols and why they're called. Oh, he does? I believe so. so I could totally be full of it. Sorry, Aaron, but like that's what I think. Sorry, sorry, Aaron. We're going to the best. Just tweet Aaron. Aaron. Just tweet Aaron. I think he'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, before we go, if anyone else has any questions, you're, feel free to light up. Um, I just want to talk about, so obviously we can't talk about season five. 
I know. I know. I'm sorry. We did a little bit. We did a little bit. But you did a really good job being vague. So good job. <laughs> um, what did you prefer using swords or bow and arrow, and how many did you break of each? <laughs> I prefer. Well, like when I was fighting with Zach, like Zach is so good, but like try holding something and hitting it against like a like a, like a metal block or like like it just felt like every time you went like this. Oh, <laughs> and like you have to do it so many times. I was like, "Fuck, be like, loosen up, man!" Like it was just like, "Raw." And I was like, "So that was not fun." But also holding the bow and arrow was actually maybe I'll say I don't know. There's something about like I love like twirling, like the knife, but like walking around with like, the sword and just being like, "Ah, oh, yeah, the sword." <laughs> Did you have archery skills prior to this? Sure did not. <laughs> <laughs> or knife skills. But the, my favorite was like when like the, the assistant, assistant director comes up to me, he's like, okay, so you're gonna like shoot bow and arrow? Do you know how to use bow and arrow? And I was like, no. <laughs> and he's like, well, the director shoots the bow and arrow that he, he, he hunts with a bow and arrow. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, people do that? And also, great. <laughs> He's very specific about you, how you hold a bow and arrow, and I'm like, we're shooting in five minutes. You guys waited until now to tell me. Also, you'll be on a horse at full gallop. Go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, on the horse, full gallop. <laughs> but I actually like. There's something about the bow and arrow that I like. There's something about the sword I like too. When you do you think the motivation when she saved them, you know, with the you know, spacesuits on and the, the, the uh, rover had stopped and you came along, ninja, ninja panda, and you <laughs> saved them. There was the motivation to save your own hide. To save her own hide. As opposed to just being there to save them. Yeah. Like to get us, did she know that they were gonna have some kind of solution? I think that she knew that there was gonna be a problem, for sure. Because Echo always sees like two, two steps ahead of everything. Um, but yeah, like the original intention was probably to like save herself. And also like she knew that there was gonna be a problem. So like she was just like, help me, help me help you, help me help you, help me help each other. <laughs> So yesterday you talked about how you had to explain to your mom that you were leaving finance to go into <laughs> acting. <laughs> Is she happy now that you're in acting? <laughs> it's my mom's birthday. Your <laughs> <laughs> phone's over there. There's my phone. There it is. Can you guys help me? Yes. I was like, I need. I was like, I never see you anymore. What's her name? <laughs> Linda. Linda. That's my mom's name. Yeah, that's her mom's name. That's my mom's name. Oh, hey, yes. Can you film this show? Absolutely. Will you like a one, two, three? Will you like a one, two, three happy birthday, Linda? Okay. Absolutely. Because we don't need to do the whole thing, right? I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, Joe, are you ready? Okay. Are you guys ready? Yep. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Linda! I love you, Mom! You, um, you know, I know that you didn't have a lot of scenes with Eliza, um, but the Clark and Echo relationship can be very interesting when you meet again. I mean, there's something about that relationship I feel they like mirror each other. Mm -hmm. um, loyalty and the yeah, like there's the loyalty. There's like the blunt, like you know, she's really for her people. Um, the the moment where she took off the hazmat suit, I think was huge for Echo. Like that was like the same thing when Bellamy like you know, in the cages or Bellamy, like, he came back. Like, she was like, wow, like, these people are selfless. Um, so I think Echo is really intrigued by how these people behave, because it's not what they were taught in Asgera. Yeah. yeah. But, like, what Clark's gesture and getting you, you know, oxygen, and she's going to remember that for the rest of her life. So when she gets back down to Earth, hopefully, you know, she's nice to her Clark. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Right? Just saying. What's that? Just yeah, <laughs> and uh, Abby too. Yeah. I didn't push anyone. Okay, well, I can stumble over. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, um, sweet Abby doodled Panda Princess. So that's a thing. 
And uh, Eliza, yes. signed it. Eliza signed the art, and I'll have you sign it. We'll put it at the charity auction. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you. And Lindsay, was that like a panda premium? Yeah, what was that today? Yes. 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 I, I looked at it, and I was like, she should have tagged you in. I know. I was like, I was like, I was looking at it, and I was literally sitting with like a panda stuffed animal, and I was like, well, I'm fine. Animals, <laughs> <laughs> you're getting blessed, you're good. Okay. Well, hey, let's give it up for Taz Jones. <laughs>